It's crazy to think that the waters in and around Brooklyn were once renowned for their shellfish. Of course, that's not the case today, but we are in luck. Three hours away, we've got some of the best scallops in the country, so we're hitting the road to go fishing with Montauk's finest. Then we'll road trip it back to Brooklyn for a lesson with one of New York City's best chefs. Finally, we're firing up the cast iron skillet to pan sear our catch of the day. Montauk shellfish is getting a lot of attention for their Montauk pearl oysters, but this two-man operation also provides Peconic-based scallops. Mike and Mike invite us over to learn about their sustainable fishery. I'm a marine biologist at Stony Brook University. And I'm a fisherman. We got together because we had the perfect complement of skills. We're an aquaculture company mm -hmm. and we grow shellfish and we formed the company on the common belief of sustainability. We both love the ocean, we love seafood. We wanted to grow the best shellfish that we could and we want to do it in a sustainable way. Yeah, I think as everybody knows, around the country and around the world, shellfish stocks and fish stocks are becoming depleted. I built my house on oysters and a major disease outbreak wiped out the population. I went from doing really well to just hitting the bottom. And that's the story of a fisherman's life. And now it's really nice to be involved in a sustainable fishery. These are the Peconic Bay scallop. This is a sea scallop. These ones live in the estuaries and bays. These live out on the continental shelf. One nice thing about harvesting bay scallops is that most of them are gonna die anyway. They have a very short lifespan. After that first year that they spawn, they'll mostly die over the winter. So it's something you don't have to feel too bad about harvesting because they're pretty much at the end anyway. Bay scallops are interesting. They have one big adductor muscle. They can open and close their shell and create a little water jet and they can propel themselves so they can escape predators. They can escape scallop dredgers even if they can move fast enough. See the eyes? Those are all eyes. Ah. So if you move, he'll sense you in the water and know to kick really? away. Or... They're moving around, kind of opening and closing. I don't know that many people realize this is how they come. A bay scallop has two sides. You want to put the flat side up, put the cup down in your hand, and then you take a bay scallop knife, and there's a perfect little spot. And when you go in there, it's important that right here, you follow the contour of the shell up along that edge. And then you just pull the belly and the rest of the organism, and then you have a perfect scallop. Do you want it? I have never had a raw scallop. Yeah, I would love to. It's delicious. Mmm. It's so sweet. They're awesome. The and that's about as fresh as you're going to get. Mm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. What's a typical catch? If I'm doing well, I might have 120 scallops on the table. So if you look at this tote, there's probably a thousand scallops in there, which will turn into about seven pounds. Wow. Nice to be out here on a day where you don't need gloves. Yeah. Summer's coming. <laughs> sort of. Nothing like the feel of the rain pelting your face in the open ocean. <laughs> this sing, is not, sing is... to the wind. <laughs> what would sea scalloping entail? A bigger boat. Uh -huh. Probably right now 20 to 25 foot waves, or at least 15 to 20. What anyway. are these guys? These are not waves. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good spot to start. So I'm going to toss these dredges in. And it, you know, you just tow around for a while until you think they're full. So uh, do you ever get hungry out here and just start snacking on scallops? I love to eat them, but my kids need them more than me right now. I think I'd eat them the entire time. <laughs> I wouldn't have anything left to take to market. Sometimes I laugh when I eat my lunch, you know? I'm like looking at this beautiful delicacy and eating yeah. this soggy peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> each one is how many pounds? Uh, probably about 100 pounds each. Bay scallops are tough to farm, so we're beginning to research and trying to figure out how to do it. It'd be cool to get a really progressive way to farm these things, and then hopefully Montauk Shellfish Company will encourage others and inspire others to, uh, to get into it. You guys don't really have an easy job, do you? After a full day out on the water, I mean, he comes home and then it's shucking for right. hours after that, too. It's... I think that from this day forward, every time I bite into a pecanic bay you will, scallop, you will remember this day? I will <laughs> truly appreciate the hard work that goes into fishing these. Now, back to Williamsburg to stop by Dressler, where award-winning chef Polo Dobkin explains to us why scallops are a mainstay on his menu. They're just naturally high in sugar just have this inherent sweetness. But you have to really be careful when you source them. First of all, I would caution people against getting scallops at the supermarket. For the most part, they'll be treated with chemicals. They just will not cook properly. They may not be the freshest. If you're looking for dry scallops, you're looking okay. for scallops that are firm mm -hmm. and obviously with no perceptible odor. When you smell a scallop, you really just want to be able to smell the, the ocean and that's it. There's different varieties of scallops. Yeah. And what are your favorite to cook? Diver scallops are around all year, mm -hmm. so they're great, but obviously the, uh, the base scallops, Nantucket and the 
iconic uh -huh. are, are wonderful. What are we going to be making today? Today we're going to make pan roasted diver scallops uh -huh. with sunchokes, salsify, pancetta, and wild mushrooms. Awesome. Should we go back to the kitchen? Yeah, let's do it. The most important part is that the pan is nice and hot. And you can't stress it enough not to put too many scallops in the same pan. Because if you put too many scallops, it's called crowding the pan. Uh -huh. It reduces the heat of the pan and it doesn't allow the caramelize. And if you don't get caramelization on the first go, it's not going to happen. We're going to do a little bit of sea salt. And I would recommend to blot to remove any excess moisture because any moisture is going to hinder the uh, caramelization. You want to have it about 90, 95% of the time on one side. So you get this beautiful gold brown color. And that's really going to bring the sweetness out of the scallop. You see it's starting to caramelize? At this point, you just want to put it into a 425 or 450 degree oven. So it's enveloped in heat. And then it's going to take three to four minutes, depending on the size of the scallop. So it doesn't actually seem that difficult. If you source the scallops correctly, uh -huh. if you get the pan nice and hot, and just allow it to get a nice and golden brown, you can't go wrong. I like to finish with just a little bit of butter, or a good amount of butter. <laughs> Some fresh thyme. And you want to make sure that the scallops are still a little firm to the touch. They should be translucent in the center. And then just baste it. If you wanted to, you could add the herb of your choice, or a little bit of lemon juice at the end. This is a little bit of a Jerusalem artichoke puree. And then the rest of our preparation. These are perfect winter colors and flavors. A little bit of truffle oil, and then just a little bit of chive oil. Gorgeous. And there you have pan roasted diver scallops. Oh my gosh, cool. They're beautiful. All right, so can we give it a try? Yeah, let's dig in. Awesome. Well, I want to get a little bit of everything. Mm. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> the caramelization is perfect. All that sweetness is just from the scallop. Wow, maybe I found my new favorite thing on the menu. Yeah. Come back for scallops. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> Polo's sea scallops were to die for, so he shared with us his technique for cooking the smaller Peconic Bay scallops. All right, the first thing we need to do is get our pan really, really hot and add a little bit of cooking oil. I like to use cast iron because it heats really evenly. I've got a half pound of Peconic Bay scallops here and I'm gonna pat them dry with a napkin to make sure that there's no moisture left on them. And now I'll give them a touch of sea salt. Okay, I think this pan is ready, so we're gonna start placing in the scallops. That's all I'm gonna do for now. I don't wanna crowd the pan too much. Just allow these to caramelize for about a minute. I'm just gonna check here for caramelization. They're looking really good. I'm just gonna give it a few more seconds and then add the butter. All right, so these are looking great. I'm just gonna turn off the heat, give them a little flip. Look at that beautiful caramelization. And now for my favorite part, I'm gonna add the butter. This is about a tablespoon of butter. And what's really nice is this butter is gonna brown a little bit and the sweetness of the scallops with the nuttiness of the browned butter is gonna be absolutely delicious. I'm gonna add some chives. Just baste the scallops for another minute or so or until they're translucent, only in the center. I'm also gonna add a touch of lemon juice just for a little brightness. Pan-seared scallops are perfect over a light pasta or in a salad, which is what I've got right here. For this recipe and more, visit HungryInBrooklyn.com. Oh, that is really good. So he's out in the front taking off the ropes and everything? Yeah. You guys are pros at this now, huh? I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> oh, seals! Seals! Yeah, there you go. Really? Yeah, those yeah. are seals. Oh, so cool! Right on! <laughs>